Knowledge is fun. Knowledge is cool. One knowledge with Nolan. Hi, I'm Nolan Winking. Back with another episode of Knowledge with Nolan. Today we're going to be talking about the water cycle. Have you ever wondered why rivers never seem to run out of water? And those rivers flow into oceans that never seem to overflow? That's due to the water cycle. So let's dig in. The water cycle is super cool. Here are the steps to the water cycle. Step one, water on the Earth's surface floats up into the air in a process called evaporation. This means that the sun's heat turns the water on the surface into its gas state of water vapor, which is less dense than the air and floats up. Step two, floating water molecules in the sky clump together to form small droplets. When there are so many of these water molecule droplets in one spot, they form what we know as clouds. This process is called condensation. Step three, the water droplets inside the clouds continue to clump together. Once the clumps of water molecules get heavy enough, they fall out of the clouds in the form of rain or snow. The technical term for this is called precipitation. The more water molecules inside the clouds, the more rain or snow that will come. Step four, the rain falls to the ground, giving water to the plants and animals. The rain also fills the lakes and rivers, which will eventually flow into the oceans. Step five, the sun's heat evaporates the water again, and the cycle repeats. Wow, it goes on forever, and ever, and ever. The water that rains down on us is not new water. That same water has been raining down thousands, maybe millions of times. The same water that we drink, water our plants with, and swim in is the same water that rained down on George Washington, Albert Einstein, and even dinosaurs. Water is made up of H2O molecules, which stands for two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. There are approximately 4.7 E plus 4.6 water molecules in all of the Earth's oceans. That is 47 quaternodecillion, or 47 followed by 45 zeros. In all of the Earth's oceans, that's a lot of water. That's 326 quintillion gallons. To get more of a perspective on how humongous that number actually is, watch Season 2, Episode 2 of Knowledge with Nolan on mind-blowingly large numbers. Back to water. 71% of the Earth's surface is water, and 97% of that is salt water, and 3% of that is fresh water. So most of the Earth is water, and most of that water is salt water. That little bit of fresh water can be found in glaciers, ice caps, deep underground, or too polluted to drink. So that only leaves us with 0.5% of all the water on Earth that's available as fresh water. It's amazing how scarce fresh water is when there's so much H2O on Earth. It's estimated that 844 million people live without clean drinking water. They have to drink more polluted water from rivers or ponds. But scientists are constantly working on ways to conserve water and fresh water. Woohoo! Go scientists! And they're giving the fresh water to people that don't have it. And some scientists are even working on ways to convert the ocean salt water into fresh water that we can drink! Yay! There's a lot of water on Earth, but Earth isn't the only place that water can be found in our universe. NASA found evidence of water molecules on the moon. Through their huge infrared telescope, they found evidence of thousands of water molecules. Their measurements show that if you took a million molecules on the moon, 100 to 400 of them would be water molecules. That's not a lot of water, enough to fill a small water bottle on the whole moon. But that's awesome that they found some at all. Water is vital for life, so it's good to know more about it. If you like this video, go ahead and press
press that like and subscribe button. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Knowledge with Nolan.